incremental code readout on a Siemens S7300 PLC by Jesus Jimenez, electromechanical engineer. Uh, this here is a incremental encoder built by Hayden Hine and is a um, one volt peak to peak signal encoder with a, a thousand pulses per revolution readout. It uses uh, differential outputs and this here is the, um, a quad op-amp uh, circuit that will convert the differential values coming from the encoder into TTL level signals and then there are uh, some uh, optocouplers to convert uh, the 5 volts supplied by this uh, cell phone charger that uh, supplies power to the circuitry and then um, used by the 24 volt DC inputs on the PLC. So the encoder A, V and revolution signals can be converted. Here is the uh, sinusoidal signals coming from the encoder. This is a data sheet from the Hayden Hein webs, uh, website and it got A minus A, A minus, V, B minus, Z, Z minus and these signals are then uh, fed into uh, three op amps and the IC. I'm using LM339 has uh, four optocouplers and uh, I mean four op amps and then I use three optocouplers to, com to uh, isolate and couple the 5 volts into 24 volts then, then I feed into the PLC um, IOs. That is uh, for the hardware side. Now, and the PLC itself and the hardware config, you need to tell the PLC that is going to be set up. Uh, this PLC is a, is a 313Z PLC that has uh, built in IOs and a, a portion of the IOs can be used as a two channel high speed counter and you can use it for counting using a special function 47 built in or frequency counting and um, then you can define uh, certain um, attributes like <coughs> the address of the channel if it's going to use a uh, hardware gate and uh, all that and then once you get the um, the hardware configuration set up to load it into the PLC. This here I'm using hexadecimal uh, 300 as the uh, channel, uh, the, 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 um, the counter address. This is important because when you build, when you, when you do a function call of the SFB47, which is a, a, a encoder counter function, uh, you need to set this address as an attribute of the function call. So uh, this here is uh, hexadecimal, and it may show up as decimal on the um, on the OV call. And uh, this here is OV one. This this here is OV one, and this here is OV one hundred. This is uh, the initial first run of the PLC. This here I'm setting uh, marker 0, 0.0 as uh, true. Then I'm loading into my memory uh, marker word ten, uh, marker double word ten zero and marker word fourteen zero. Those are the initial values, and then in OV1 I call SFV47, which is the, the actual um, hardware call for the built-in high-speed counters on the PLC. And this is where you have to set the address. This here is the actual value counted by the encoder. This here is the address of the channel. And this here is the, um, the, the, the software gate. This here are uh, markers that I used. Uh, this is an, uh, it's a re uh, result value from the function call that I used for revolution increments. Uh, this is very useful because you can count pulses using the A and B um, um, faces, the quadratures, and then uh, you can also count revolutions because for every turn there is a very short pulse 
and every time there is a short pulse, the, the software gate causes a a um, an interrupt call. It, the a O85 is called. This is O85. Every time there is a a software a software gate, uh, this OV85 is called, and then I count to which sense uh, the rotation is going. So I can count pulses and I can count uh, revolutions. This is very useful because you can actually turn this incremental encoder into an absolute encoder just by setting the uh, home position and then counting revolutions. You can count as much as the uh, double word and um, word allows you. This here are the LEDs uh, lighting as I turn either clockwise and counterclockwise. And uh, this here is a um, variable table. Uh, the values are incrementing on the pulses. Um, a double word register and on the uh, word the revolutions are also incremented. Um, maybe you cannot really see it very truly because the, the resolution of the camera isn't that good, but um, the values are adding up or subtracting depending on which direction the the shaft of the uh, encoder is turned. And um, I'll try to zoom in this here. I think there's a zoom function somewhere. Uh, let me see. Zoom in, yeah. Uh, getting better. Let me just see if I can zoom it a little bit. Uh, more, no, not good enough. Let me zoom it again. Uh, down here, zoom in. Okay, now you can see it. Uh, you can see um, marker, double word, pan. That's where the pulses are are um, res uh, resulted uh, when the SFB47 function call is uh, executed. And then and, and marker word 14. That's where the pulses. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the revolutions are added or subtracted using OB85. And this here is the, uh, the hardware gate. I can switch it off and thus uh, disable the counting. <coughs> then, if I want to, you know, start from the beginning, I can uh, either. Uh, call OB100 or um, press the memory reset which will restart the PLC. It will reload again and OB100 will be loaded and every time OB100 is loaded uh, rewrite zero and on both uh, uh, variables so you can use this like to count a long axis or something. This is very handy because uh, this helps me to interface. This 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 encoder here was uh, not uh, was part of a CNC, and they dumped it because they thought it was faulty. But it's actually a working encoder. Thanks for watching.